something that you know is bad, and then Eden finally just shares with us. I truly feel that the video you just saw depicts one of the primary goals of the building code, which is to prevent the loss of life. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you and I appreciate your interest in these topics. This video will cover a basic shear wall inspection. However, please note that the exterior shear wall inspection is very often inspected concurrently with the roof sheathing inspection. On an upcoming video, I will present the roof sheathing inspection requirements. In very basic terms, shear walls are critical since they help strengthen structures so that they are far less likely to collapse in the event of an earthquake or as a result of high winds. Now let us get started with some pre-shear wall inspection requirements. First, be sure the construction site is safe, that is ladders and scaffolds are properly secured, and to OSHA requirements. Also, if your project requires special inspection or a structural observation for the shear walls, be sure this is done prior to the building inspection. This is normally noted on the plan set, or often there are supplemental documents indicating such requirements. And as a tip to help facilitate the shear wall inspection, it is recommended that the nailing schedule be painted on the shear walls, including hold down locations and wall lengths. And in terms of efficiency, in my experience, it has helped me to inspect every element from the top plates down to the mud sill when it comes to the shear wall inspection. This approach will start to make sense leading up to the rough trades inspection, so stay with me. Also ensure that window and door flashings are not installed since nailing in such areas must be verified. As well as assuring that all shear wall fastener shiners have been removed and fasteners reinstalled in such areas. The building inspector also verifies that all window and door openings are per the architectural floor plans and elevation views. Also be sure that if electrical panels are installed in shear walls, that they are detailed on the plans. Often structural straps are specified in such openings in order to maintain the shear integrity. So be on the lookout for that. The building inspector also verifies the sheathing material type, which includes verifying if plywood or OSB is specified for the shear wall panels. So please note that if plans call for plywood, OSB may not be used, except if approved by the design professional of record. The plywood grade is also verified, and the grade is typically stamped on the sheathing, as in this example. The thickness of plywood is also verified. Building inspectors also verify the location and length of the shear wall panels as per the plan sheets and shear wall schedule. Keeping with the methodology of inspecting the shear from the top plates to the mud sill, the framing material at the shear walls is also verified to the approved plan. Which includes verifying the framing grade of the studs, post, and headers. Building inspectors verify hold down post locations since very often double stud 4x material is specified in these locations. And in such locations, hold down posts are edge nailed. Here is an example.
Shear nails are also verified to the shear weld schedule. You can do this by having the contractor remove a nail or nails, or by verifying the nail box on site. And in terms of nail verification, the building inspector verifies nail diameters, nail spacing, edge nailing into hold down posts, and that staggered nailing is provided. This is generally in areas where nail spacing is at 6 inches on center or less. Stagger nailing eliminates damage to the framing. Building inspectors also verify that the shear weld panels are nailed between 3 8 of an inch and 3 quarters of an inch from joint edges, as well as assuring that the shear weld panels are provided with an eighth of an inch gap. Also ensure that the nail heads do not break the sheathing skin, since this can compromise the shear weld strength. Edge nailing is verified at the top plate of the first floor walls. And at the sole plate of the upper walls. And if required by plan, along the rim joist or blocking. Nails and other anchors in contact with pressure treated wood must be galvanized, which typically applies at the mud sill when using pressure preservative treated wood. Also verified are top plate lap offsets, which cannot be less than 24 inches. So in other words, see this top plate lap? There cannot be another lap within 24 inches of this lap. Also assure there is a minimum of eight, 16 nails on each side of a top plate splice, unless the structural plan indicates otherwise. Sill and sole plate framing and shear wall transfers are also verified, which includes checking the foundation sill bolt spacing at the shear walls, since typically shear wall schedules dictate the spacing, and generally, the stronger the shear wall specified, the tighter the bolt spacing and nailing, so be on the lookout for that. Nailing types and spacing of wall sole plates to floor framing is also verified as per the shear wall schedule at the upper floor walls. Straps and clips specified must be installed as per the structural plan and assure that all required fastener holes in such hardware are filled. And if pre-manufactured shear wall panels are installed, assure that they are installed to the manufacturer's installation guidelines. this concludes this video. I want to thank you for tuning in and I also want to let you know that I appreciate you and I appreciate your interest in this topic. Until next time everyone, stay awesome.